what's up hello y'all welcome back to the complicated entertainment channel if you are new here um hey channel members what's up what's up what's up first things first it seems like beyonce is going to be featured in the halftime show for the nfl yes 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 congratulations to beyonce for this opportunity um it is a collaboration deal with netflix okay um, halftime of Ravens versus Houston Texans on Christmas Day, live on Netflix, okay? I wonder how much she got paid for this deal, okay? Is it 10 million? <laughs> if you know, you know. But no, this is great. I feel like she's going to be announcing her tour after this performance is over. It just makes, makes sense. Beyonce, Beyonce doesn't just do things to do things. It's typically always a like deeper like meaning or like some more you know, tea to whatever she's doing. Like she, she always has like a, you know, a backstory or like a, you know, it's just, a, it's, it's always layers to her art. Okay. So that's why I'm saying that. Okay. But, um, her announcement has gotten over 20 million views on Instagram. So people are excited. People are excited. Um, I feel like really, to be honest, this is nice. This is great, but I want to see her on the real halftime show at the Super Bowl. Okay. Yeah. This is nice. You know, and I feel, ha 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 ha, but no. Okay. Uh, but this is Beyonce's sixth um, NFL performance. Okay, so this is she's really well tapped in with the NFL for sure. Um, Beyonce has two major projects coming out in December 2024: The Lion King in theaters, and she has the NFL halftime show. Okay, so it's gonna be T. Um, she's expected to bring out some guests. I think she should bring out. Miley Cyrus and Dolly Parton for her Cowboy Carter album, and um, she should also bring out um, Kendrick. No, don't bring, don't bring out. No, 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 don't bring out Kendrick. Don't bring out Kendrick. Um, she should also bring out um, Shibuzi, okay, for sure. And Post Malone, yes, bring out Post Malone. Perform the song Levi's. He cut me pretty little. I saw a comment that said, "Oh, you sing too much. You sing too much, and you fuck any and everything. You fuck too much." That deep dish ass bussy, leave me alone. What? Oh, oh, bussy deeper than the damn volcano. Stop playing with me. Like for real. If I want to sing, I'ma sing. Like people be trying. Don't you hate when people try to come into into your world or your space and try to tell you how to do your own thing? Don't don't like, baby. I I set the rules on this channel. Anyway, um, I think that Post Malone and Beyonce will be a perfect perfect collaboration on the stage. Um, you know, they could have a really nice elaborate set together. I um, mean, you know, I just, I, I love it. I love Post Malone. He has some country music that he has some country music that he just dropped recently. And he's been really doing well in the country space for sure. So congratulations to Beyonce on this deal. I think we all know that Jay-Z has, <laughs> has some influence in this happening. No shade. And I'm just being honest here. Um, people feel like Beyonce and Jay-Z's marriage is more so a business like deal. It's more so a business transaction more than them actually being in love. Like, you know, people feel like love is not really there. It's more so just, you know what I'm saying? Business. And that's cool. I don't hate it. The Megan Thee Stallion and Drake beef is still currently going on. Um, so as of recently, Megan Thee Stallion was recently doing a TikTok video or whatever. Oh, she was on live. She was doing some video. And that's when a Drake song popped up and she made a little face. She was like, oh my gosh, like this is embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Gonna put more sauce. Megan, you know you wanted to dance to that song. Stop acting like you're not a Drake fan. Stop acting like you're not a Drake fan, okay? Now people are confused. Why does Drake hate Megan? Why is Drake shading Megan for the entire incident? Well, Drake is from Toronto. And also, okay, Tory Lanez is from Canada as well, Toronto. So, you know, it's just kind of like they have like a, you know, when you when you from like a certain place and it's certain people who you cool with from your location, you got to keep your loyalty from your hometown. You got to keep your loyalty. Keep that loyalty. Yeah. Um, but I do think that um, Megan... Um, she knew what she was doing by keeping that in the video because she could have easily just took it out the video, but she 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 was trying to be petty. Like she wanted to she wanted to throw shade at Drake real quick. Like she gets off by being like sneak dissing. She don't she ain't gonna dish you clearly, but she gonna sneak dish you. And it's like to me that gives scary. Like it gives scary. Like if you like you could have just deleted the whole clip. It's not hard to go into the app, click a portion, and delete that segment. Like it's not hard on TikTok. I promise you it's not. Like, she just wanted to get, you know, some clicks and attention and some, you know what I'm saying, some conversation on her. I mean, it's working, obviously. But I do think that, um, you know, the whole Drake thing 
it's really <laughs> insane. But I wonder if there's some more tea that we don't know about. Maybe it's not just about the Tory Lane situation because y'all, Megan and Drake were very cool. So most likely it's some more tea that we haven't really like, you know, dug, you know, and dived into to really understand why they really are beefing. You know, maybe it could have been, you know, um, Megan was trying to sleep with uh, one of Drake's friends, one of Drake's homeboys. You don't know. Like, that's just type of, that's the type of stuff that she does. You know, she effed her best friend's man. Yes, her best friend's man. And she never denied the claims. She never denied the claims, okay? Because she did it. She said, oh, when I was drunk, oh, yeah, we, we messed around a few times. That's your best friend's man, though. That's weird. That's sick, okay? That's weird. Any Any woman who falls out over a man, they have boy issues. Your bond should be so tight that no snotty nose little 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 boy little man is gonna come between y'all vibe or y'all friendship or y'all you know situation. That's how you know somebody is off, somebody crazy, somebody be digmatized. Okay. Oh well, well, well. Moving on to Nikki, she has just recently gotten herself. Okay. Um, some more achievements. Her stats have been updated. Yes, her stats have been updated. And um, I'm here for it. I'm so here for it. And um, Starships has officially went diamond. Yes, okay. Starships is officially diamond. She becomes the first female rapper to earn multiple solo diamond singles, okay? Um, it's T. That's just T, okay? It's Lipton, okay? It's, that's, that, it is what it is. Okay, I'm here for it. Nicki Minaj and Rihanna are the only black female artists with multiple solo diamond records in the United States of America, okay? That's right, only Nicki Minaj and Rihanna, okay? Um, why doesn't Beyonce have this record? That's strange. Maybe she needs to update her records. I don't know, that's weird. Anyway, um, so Nicki Minaj, her um, Pink Friday Roman Reloaded is four times platinum. Um, Pound the Alarm and Right By My Side is now two times platinum. And Stupid Ho is now a platinum song. Okay, so congratulations to that. Only four female artists have multiple solo diamond singles. Nicki Minaj, Rihanna, Katy Perry, and Lady Gaga. Only four female artists have multiple solo diamond songs. Um, that shows you who, who Nicki Minaj's real peers are. Nicki Minaj's real peers are the Gaga's, the Katy Perry's, the Beyonce's, the Rihanna's. Those are who she is you know, really competing with. Okay, I'm just being real. Just being honest with you. Okay, this is just being real. Okay, so congratulations to Nikki for that. This is a big deal, big accomplishment, okay? Big, big deal. All right, I'm proud of her. But like I said, I don't be surprised. I, like, this stuff doesn't surprise me. It's nice to see, but I'm never like, oh my gosh, I'm so shocked. No, I don't get shocked about that stuff. Just being real, I don't, I don't get shocked. Okay, we are one month away from the deluxe version of PF2. How y'all feeling about that? How y'all feeling about that? I'm here for, I'm ready um, every day that goes by, I'm <laughs> with the new music, with the new music, okay? Um, yes, comment down below. Um, how do you feel about all this, all these records being broken, all these records being, you know what I'm saying, clocked, okay? Because <laughs> I'm here for it. Now, moving on to Armand and Nicki Minaj. There's been some drama online recently. Um, Nicki Minaj is addressing the blogger Armand Wiggins for his, like, distasteful comments towards Nicki's new project. Insecure with Juice World, you know, it's just a lot going on. Like I, I told y'all, some hate it, some love it. Okay, and Ar Ar Armand is one of those who hate it. Let's get into what Nikki said. Oh, thank you, thank you. No, I'm glad you did this. I am glad you did this. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This Gumby ass nigga just got one here talking about what could have should have been a hit. Sweetheart, do you know how many plaques I have? from Pink Friday too. Do you know, you dumb mother, how many, how many platinum plaques Pink Friday 2 has? I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand. We, uh, um, Keys, Keys, I need, I need uh, one of my barbs that keep all the data. You know, because we don't hide our data. Um, we need to let this dumb mother know how many songs on Pink Friday 2 are double platinum, platinum, or or gold. Let, let's let them know. 
Armand was dragging her song. Nikki had to remind him, baby, I'm, I make hits. I does this, okay? I get platinum records. I get records. I, 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 I break numbers. Like, like please stop, okay? Um, so, all of it, like, leave her alone. And I understand. I understand how it feels to, like, you do so much, and then you have one song that people may not like, and all of a sudden, like, oh, my gosh, like, people are just tarnishing down my entire career and legacy. Like, stop. Please stop. The numbers speak for themselves, and um, I'm still winning. So, yes, let's move on to this next topic. Moving on to Cardi B, she has once again postponed her album. What is going on here? This is just getting sick. This is this is just getting disgusting, okay? She's, this is her fifth year in a row postponing her new album, okay? It's giving Normani 2.0, for real. No, it's giving the rap Normani. My album will be out. My businesses, my secret businesses will be out. Shh, I can't tell y'all what I'm working out. Hopefully next year I give me a little boyfriend. I'm holeless right now. I have so much things coming next year. And you know what? I've been feeling so emotional lately because I know, I know next year is going to be my year. Like, this... Honey, at this point, you know, I get it. You divorced kids. Your label showed me you. Let's talk that to you as well. Your budget went downhill as well. Let's talk that to you as well. Um, I get it. You're going through a lot. Cool, right? But I think, honestly, if you know you're going through a lot, do not promise your fans a new album because now they're going to have to wait again. And this is their, like, fifth or sixth year waiting for a new project from you, okay? No shade, all right? And every time I find somebody saying, oh, um, next year is my year, typically nine times out of ten that year does not become that, it doesn't become their year because they're waiting until the right moment to take action. When you want to have a great year or a great week or a great whatever, you have to take action now. So by the time that time comes, you will have that great time, that great year, okay? Um, Cardi, you need to make sure that you're making music now. You aren't in the studio right now. You're on live and you're on Instagram, you on Twitter arguing with fans and Elon Musk, okay? To have a great year or a great portion, preparation is required for that next season or chapter that you want to be great in. Um, I, I want to be great in 2025. Oh, I'm going to be great in 2026. Okay, start now. Start now. So by the time 2026 comes, you're going to be able to just eat off the tree you built. And you won't be in 2025 or in 2026 trying to build, get it together. No, it's already together. I'm, it's already going good. Cardi needs to learn that lesson as well. Start now. Put it out now. Put some singles out now. Okay? Stop waiting. Everybody, everybody love waiting and waiting. What are you waiting for? Tomorrow ain't promised. Get up. Cardi, get up. Okay? People love to put these dates and deadlines. Just start. Like, I don't understand. It irritates me. Like, just take action. Because nine times out of ten, you won't feel like doing it by the time that time comes. So just start now. She says she has a new business coming out. We're going to see what that is. Um, I think she should probably sell, you know, um, if it's a makeup line, I don't want it. If it's a makeup line, I, we don't want that, okay? We don't want that. If it's adult toys, it will sell pretty well because that's kind of your brand. Um... What else? I'm trying to think. What else? What else? What else? Um, she could also sell, like, plastic surgeon lists. You know how people sell vendor lists? Yeah, she could sell, like, you know, doctor's list of, like, you know, doctors she recommends for different procedures. That would be a great digital product for her to sell. Um, you know, she get some coin off that. And she could even sell shapewear. You know, she'd be shaped like a guitar. So I'm pretty sure people want that shape, too. So they're going to go ahead and buy it. Okay, they're going to buy it. Um, because people are insecure. <laughs> like People are very insecure. The average human being is very insecure about a lot of things. And, you know, society makes you insecure. Society forces you to be insecure. They shove things down your throat. They shove unrealistic beauty standards down your throat. They shove Cardi B's botched surgeries down your throat. So now you think that, like, you think that Cardi B's body is realistic and you have to have this body. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't have to have that. So, um, you know, she'll get a lot of sales off shapewear. You know, people love to be snatched and stuff. You don't need it. Your body is fine. Let's move on to this next topic. Moving on to Doja Cat, congratulations to her. She made some history as of recently. Paint the Town Red is now the most streamed solo female rap song, surpassing um, Need to Know, okay? Um, no shade, but I feel like Paint the Town Red is um, not as good as Need to Know. So I'm a bit hurt that Paint the Town Red surpassed Need to Know as being the most streamed solo female rap song. What? This is crazy. But y'all, no shade. These are not rap songs. I keep, I keep, I keep telling y'all this over and over and over again. Okay, um, need to know is definitely a pop song. Like it's not a rap song. Like, like, like. You know what it's like. I don't got no time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's pop. That she's singing on that. 
Hey, man, I need to know. Hmm. That's pop down. Like, you're excited. That's pop. I'm sorry. This don't count. This this record don't count. Painted Tom Red is a bit more rappy than, than Need to Know. So I'll give her that. But congratulations on this record. Um, I'm surprised Doja Cat has the most, like, streams for these songs. Like, who would have known she has the highest selling, like, you know, female rap songs on, on these streaming platforms? That's insane. All right, y'all. Moving on to SZA. Yes, my girl SZA. Um, she is officially continuing to do numbers as well. Like, I just love SZA, y'all. I love her aura. I love her vibe. She's a liar, and that kind of pisses me off. I cannot stand a liar, like... Liars just give me so much irritation because just tell the truth. Like, I don't understand why you lie so much. Like, I, like you know what? You know, I love her, but now I'm kind of side-eyeing her. Anyway, um, SZA Saturn becomes the first song by a black woman released this year. This year, the first song by a black woman this year to surpass 600 million streams on Spotify. It becomes her 10th song to achieve this milestone, despite not having an official music video. Okay. Um, congratulations to SZA. Um, this song is recent. It came out this year and, you know, this song is, has done well. Mind you, this song is not even, like, attached to any project. Well, I don't know. Um, this song came out at an awkward time. It was, like, randomly throughout this year. Maybe that was when she was supposed to drop her deluxe version, but never finished up with it. So I guess that's when Saturn came out. Um, I guess that was supposed to be the, the beginning of a rollout, but I guess it got kind of scrapped. But I mean, baby, you are off to a good start because Saturn was charting for so many weeks and 600 million streams. This is T, baby. This is T, okay? So I'm very proud of her. Like, this is really T. Congrats, Boo. It becomes her 10th song to achieve this milestone. Mm -mm -mm. You're doing it big, Boo. You're doing it big. Um, keep going and drop your project, okay? Drop your project right now. Yo, Glow has been having a crazy run this year. Her song was Sexy Red. What You Know About Me has now hit number one again on Apple Music, y'all. Apple Music, number one. Yes, again. This is crazy to me. I mean, I'm, I just don't understand how she's having so much hits. Like, you know, she found her sound and she ran and she even tweaked her sound a bit. You know, and she's not, like, no, like people are not tired of her. People are not tired of her music. People are not annoyed with her because she continues to have music to pop out and do well. So to see this is very, very, very T. Um... I do think that um, she should drop a like you know an EP at the start of next year just to keep to keep it going, just to keep the hits coming, you know, because she has been like hit after hit after hit, okay, um, and and she does it so effortlessly. She's not really trying hard, like she's not really like obsessing over the numbers or anything. She's just putting out great art, great music, and that's it. Like that's what people understand. Like if you make good art or great music, it's going to do well. You can't spend your whole entire career. Rapping about your p-word, that's not gonna get you nowhere, baby. You can't spend your entire career making trashy songs, and you wonder why you're not why you're not where you want to be at because your music is awful. It's god awful, okay. And honestly, I think it's crazy how like so so many people counted Global out this year. Um, JT was saying, "Girl, nobody wanted you to do no album. Nobody wants your music." Next thing you know, Global is doing way better than JT, and the whole time JT is up here bashing people. No shade, but JT needs to calm down. Like, her head is too gas right now, okay? Have confidence, yes, but don't be out here acting like you just some Beyonce now. No shade, because that was weird. I love her down, but girl, know your place, okay? Chill out. Moving on to Sabrina Carpenter. Um, Sabrina is getting so much backlash online because people are saying, girl, your concerts are too explicit for children, okay? Uh, why are you on stage, legs, bust wide open? You know, you're doing this, you're doing that. What is really going on here? People are just so disgusted by her actions, and they're saying... She needs to be more kid friendly, okay? Um, now, this is my personal opinion on that. Why can't y'all just like make sure that you're being a good parent? If you don't want your kid to see that stuff, then don't take them to the concert, monitor their phones, monitor their devices, and call it a day, okay? Um, and also, why are women always having to be responsible for the youth? Why is it always women who have to be the role models? Like, y'all never look at men who, rap, who, who brag about shooting and cheating on women and and this and this and, and, and all that. Y'all never go up to them and tell them, oh, you need to be a better role model for the kids. Y'all never do that. But the second they, they, you know, a woman show a little booty, a little skin, a little freaky freaky, now all of a sudden it's just a, a crime and it's like, oh my gosh, y'all need to be stopped. What are you talking about? Okay, what are you talking about? You sound sick and mental, like literally. Like, I will like put an iron on your cheek. Yes, you know the iron you iron your clothes with? Yeah, I'm turning it on, put it on your cheek. Your face, not your butt, okay? I want you to feel it, okay? 
Um, so yeah, leave her alone. She's fine. She's getting her bag, getting her coin. And also, Sabrina Carpenter is not the first woman to ever have like freaky lyrics or like, you know, those type of references. So I don't know why everybody acts so brand new. Every time a new artist comes out, oh, be be for the kids. What? If people made music for the kids, like they wouldn't have a career. Like, no shade. Like their career would be very Disney Channel audience like. Like, no. The Tyla comparisons are still coming in hot. Okay, they're still bringing them up, all right? Um, as of recently, Tyler was doing a video. Um, Tyler has just finished up her um, music video for her Push to Start video. It came out recently. And um, they're saying, oh, it's giving Rihanna, it's giving Rihanna. Um, what is this generation's obsession with, like, putting people's name to other, other people's names? Like, why, do, why does it have to always be the next this person, the next that person? Why does it have to always be, oh, you're the next this why? I don't understand why people do that. I guess it's to make them like feel like there's like something to compare. You know, people love to compare. So I guess that's why people do that. But I don't understand why people do that. It's just so weird to me and I don't rock with it. I don't like it. Okay. Actually, Tyler doesn't even remind me of Rihanna. Like I always say this, they have the same like aura and the same kind of energy, but I would never say like they remind me of each other. That's just insane. That's just reaching. That's just extra. So um, let's cut that out. Let's cut the comments about that out. It's just dumb. It's plain lame. Okay. Uh, but yes, comment down below. What is your opinions? That's all I have for you in today's video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Tap the bell so you can get an alert every single time I post a new video. And I will see you in the next one. Be safe, y'all.